Folks, we need to have a conversation about disrespectful offers or stupid offers. Now, as somebody who has written plenty of disrespectful offers that I am positive the sellers thought were stupid, I do see a line. I see there's a clear line between a disrespectful offer and a stupid offer. Again, a stupid offer is one that should not be made. Let's be very clear about that. But I thought I would talk to Dion and Matt, the lumberjack, and see if they agree or if they, they, you know, a stupid offer is a disrespectful offer. You know, it's one of the same, just, you know, smaller word. Uh, Matt, we will go to you first. What do you think? Disrespectful versus stupid. Is there a difference? Yeah, there's definitely a difference. I think it, it's, you know, some people would sit there and tell you, you know, you got to sit in front of the, you know, you have to sit in front of the the seller, right? Mm -hmm. Well, nine times, nine out of 10 times, that's not possible. Nine out of 10 times they've hired a broker. Nine out of 10 times they have a gatekeeper for a reason. And nine out of 10 times they wouldn't understand any of the things you're going to say to them anyway. Mm -hmm. So I think there is a difference. You know, stupid is, hey, the house is $500,000. Let's offer 350. Like why waste time and ink? You know, even if you're docu signing, it's a waste of time. But if it's five hundred thousand dollars and you can write justification right. of, hey, this is my offer and here's why, right? Then it's not disrespectful. I think no matter what, it's people far too often put the focus on themselves. It's about the other person. The other person is the seller. That seller is likely going to be disrespected no matter what offer you write. Yeah, They're, they are because they came up with the price on their house. They've justified it in their mind with their broker, all the different ways that their house is worth more than every other option in the market. Um, and they're often not realistic. And so mm -hmm. I find that no matter what the number is, if it's not list plus, it's mm -hmm. going to be offensive to them. And so you yeah. just have to help put, give them the understanding of this is why I'm coming from where I'm coming from. The interview that you did with that guy with the tree thing, mm -hmm. he wasn't writing disrespect, you know, disrespectful offers, right? You know, he was, he was writing aggressive offers, but with a very understanding of mindset, but communicating through the process. Yes. They weren't stupid. They were disrespectful. They weren't stupid, but they, they weren't bad. It's not disrespectful to people. You're not like calling up and going, Hey jerk, this yeah. is the number, you know, yeah. you're still presenting it in a way that will give you the best opportunity to get it accepted. So I, I think that they're, I think stupid offers have no place in the business, right? Because yeah. they're just wasting everybody's time. And, you know, everyone's always like, because the one deal that that finally sticks on is likely a deal you still lose on. Yeah. Because yeah. somebody There's else saw reason. that, right? There's a reason that yeah. they're finally like, oh yeah, screw it. Like I'm going to lose it. Like, like might as well do this. So that's my take on the matter. All righty, Dan, what do you think? Disrespectful versus stupid. Are they one in the same? So I'm going to break it down into a teachable format. Oh, I Perfect. like it. So, oh, so the first thing is the advent of disrespectful offers. So people understand why it's a term so many people are using. Patrick Bet David mm -hmm. started talking about it in videos on as things sit longer, you can make disrespectful offers. So it became catchy and people started using it. So now we're going to see the backlash of people saying, I'm not going to make a disrespectful offer because it sounds disrespectful. So that's the where it came from, the origin. Yeah. So here's the practical use of it. And the way that people can think of this when they think I'm going to make a disrespectful offer, because to me, disrespectful doesn't mean the seller, doesn't mean the listing agent, right? When we say disrespectful versus stupid, mm -hmm. I want to be able to go to the person who actually matters to me, my agent, and say with clarity, here's how I'm not wasting your time. Right. We're not going to make an offer that's so stupid, it will obviously get ignored or get backlash from the listing agent saying right. that you don't know how to do your job. I'm going to say, and I'm glad that Matt picked the, the number 500,000, because here's my example from three months ago, property listed at $500,000. If I went and said, okay, I see a property at $500,000, I want to offer four. That's stupid. Hmm. But when I go to my listing agent and go, I've expanded my market search about 30 minutes out. I found um, 11 new markets. These two markets have some deals. These two properties have been sitting on the market for over 100 days. This one actually needs some work. This might be my first burr project. That's how the conversation started. Mm -hmm. Ending up being my last burr project. But I said, it's been on the market for over 100 days. If I offer 500,000, they're going to jump at it. So I'm going to start at four. 
I wanted like an 80% offer. And I thought if they countered pretty close to four, I'd probably accept it. They countered at 477. And right at that point in time, because the listing was also listed very poorly. I explained this to the agent too. I said, it's listed like a house. The yeah. front picture shows a one story tiny house because this duplex is on a cliff. Mm. So the second unit is here. The first unit is here. All you see is a house. The word, it wasn't listed as a duplex. The word duplex was used one time at the very end of the description. There were no pictures of meters. There was nothing. So I was calling utility companies. And one said, we can't share information because you're not the owner. But I can tell you that they haven't paid the gas, so it shut off. Yeah, there you go. So I knew there was economic distress. So like I had the days on market, the economic distress, this reasonable reason to go, yeah, 80% offer is kind of disrespectful if people look at it just as you see a listing and you make that offer. But when you add how long it was listed, the, the fact that the owner's in distress. So they offered 477 and I said, no, I'm going to stay at four. Then they offered 444 and I stayed at four. They offered 422, which was close. And several of the investors around here that I've talked to said that when they saw that it sold, they would have paid 450 all day long, but they thought 500 was too much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I walked away and the seller contacted, the listing agent contacted us and asked if our four was still good. So we closed at four because of those factors that said a disrespectful offer was the right offer at the time. Yeah. I think there's so much in that and that and that's really where I want people to understand because they see us writing so first off absolutely right Patrick Bet David came up with the catchy phrase he was talking about million you know tens of millions of dollar properties getting 5 million him that's where this came from absolutely right full credit to him and I do think it's catchy but I also think some people hear it and they do dumb things in the in the market we are in today an example, in my opinion, of a stupid offer is, we'll use your example. The duplex comes on the market, what is it? Uh, October 9th, today, with the day we're recording this. You write a 400 offer on on October 10th. That is stupid. Yeah. Right, that's yep. just dumb. Yep. You have to know what's going on in the market. And today, right, the market, you know, you have to wait a while. In my market, 30 days is where the first price drop comes. And I don't know your market, but 100 days certainly feels like a price drop should have come. It needed work. Gas was shut off. All these other things going on. Writing your 400 offer, in my opinion, wasn't even disrespectful. It was a reasonable offer. Sticking to your guns, not negotiating up, awesome. But the reason I keep harping on disrespectful is I am trying to shake my audience. So much of my audience is conditioned to pay list price or list price plus. Agreed. My greatest fear is they see a 500 listing and they write 495 or right. 490. I'm like, dude, wake up. We're not going for little discounts. That's not a motivated seller. Mm -hmm. Write aggressive offers. So that's why I like disrespectful. It's catchy. It kind of makes you wake up. And um, it also tells you to do the work. And um, so, yeah, I think there's a clear line between disrespectful and stupid. What do you think, Matt? Yeah, I, th I mean, like I, I think, you know, it's uh, it's relational too. you know, we have brokers that we worked with for some time. I value their time. I respect them. I don't want to make them look like a jerk, you know, mm -hmm. to to other brokers because it is a small network of people. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's all, you know, how you're delivering it. And I yep. think that you know, making them aware of these issues, I think is important. And I think that, you know, there's a lot of bad agents out there, you know, and so anything that you can do to help support the the case for why you're making the offer that you're making, you know, it's kind of like the same thing on, you know, Facebook marketplace when someone sees a car and they're like, 4,000 today, I'll come pick it up. Mm. The only thing you're guaranteeing is that you bought some piece of crap if they're willing to take that number. Right. So I think that, you can always do right by yourself by it, it, it. People have to understand it's better in my pocket than it is in the other guy's pocket. I need yeah. it in my pocket. So yeah. just it, it be thoughtful, thoughtful in your approach, but a disrespectful offer is not, is not rude. It's, it is what it is. I mean, yeah, the seller is, wants one, right? There's, this is that's a business why transaction. Listed. Well, yeah. Hey, I mean, you know, who is, who is the king of disrespectful offers? It's Pace Morby. Yeah. But he is a solution 
yes, to every person unique. that buy that he buys a property from. And that's what yeah, people he's miss. the answer. Yeah, we're not exactly. we're not we're not clubbing these people into a yes. We're yeah. giving them an option that we feel comfortable with. And if they feel comfortable, that's where a contract comes in. It's a meeting of the minds. Mm -hmm. Yep. So uh, at the yeah. end of the day, I want to pay, you know, what do you want to pay? As little as possible. Well, how much is that? As little as you'll accept. Yeah. I can play that game all day long. I want to pay yeah. as little as possible yeah. for obvious reasons. Yeah, exactly. The other thing I will highlight, because I want to highlight stupid behavior. And I have seen this, unfortunately. People hear me talk about disrespectful. They hear about my process of writing offers. They will go out and they will get their buy box and they will tell an agent. I have heard this. These 43 listings, write every write an offer on every property at 30% off. That oh, is stupid. Waste of time. That's a waste, waste of, time. of time. Shotgun approach. You have to do the work. You have to have a story. The other thing I will tell you is if you have agents that refuse to write your offers, but you still feel your you have a story and education. What I do is I just call the listing broker and I tell them the reasons. Yep. You know, yep. I don't so, disagree. Yeah. DM, what do you think of all this? So uh, the last 10 years I ran a CDL school, I started off as an instructor and I had some ideas that grew the company. So I was slowly demoted down to the president of the company to the point where the owners lived out of state and hadn't been to a campus in probably five or six years. Right? They could, they could go off and I ran the business. And they had this term that they used anytime I came up with what they called a, a Dion level idea. A that Dion would level idea. I possibly like it. grow the company, but could cost the company a bunch of money, right? Uh -huh. I would have to run it by them and they would play devil's advocate. They would try to poke holes in it from every angle they could think of. They might even phone a friend and say, hey, let's let's poke a hole in this idea because it's it could cost us hundreds of thousands or it can make us millions. So I have some ideas, some were dismissed because they found holes, which is great. That's the whole point of that. And then sometimes they'd be like, we can't find a, a hole in it. Go run with it, company group. I look at making a disrespectful offer or a lower offer or a, a offer with contingencies or anything like that that you're making. Your agent is your devil's advocate. Yeah. If they can poke holes in your reasoning. I like it. Right. If they can actually poke holes that you can't defend, maybe that's not the right offer. If you, like you said, Zuber, you present your thing to the, the agent and they just say, I'm not going to do that. I Instead of calling the listing agent, I would move on to the next agent. And then that would educate the agent. Yeah. I welcome your advice. But when I can articulate it in such a way that I'm still convinced, I think I'll be able to convince the seller. So it's your job to make the offer. And if they don't, then it's new agent time. There you go. But I agree. We're not in this alone. I think um, Joe Kuhn says this often. One of the biggest mistakes people make on the path to early retirement is trying to do it by themselves, mm. right? So if you're a stock person, you want to have a professional stock portfolio um, deep dive with, with somebody, you know, like a fee-only advisor. If you're in real estate, you should be in a circle like this. Like one of the reasons I like interacting with you guys every single week is this is my sounding board. Mm -hmm. we've, we've done videos where I said, hey, let's look at my portfolio. And it was really me looking at you guys to see if you could poke holes on whether I could retire or not. And then a couple months later, yeah, I'm tired. I wasn't going to do that by myself. So your agents on your team, when it comes to making these offers, you can listen to their advice. Take it if you can't prove it wrong or if you can't disprove it. But if if they can't poke holes in it and still won't make the offer, time to move on. Agreed. Dion, where can people find you? Right here on YouTube, Dion Talk Financial Freedom, where I do my live streams every Tuesday afternoon, 4 p.m. Pacific. Matt, closing thoughts and where can people find you? I think this is I think this is all correct. This is teaching people how to properly buy. I think that's a good thing. You know, yeah, we want to have dialogue, we want to have a conversation. And too uh, if you make a stupid offer, that conversation usually is over because they'll just not respond. So Lumberjack Landlord, YouTube, Instagram, and eleven thirty AM Eastern time on Sundays and eight PM on Saturday boot camps. Woo! There we go. Last thing I'll say about, we've done a lot of talk about price in this video. Realize that if you're really doing your job, it can also turn into terms. Yes. Price and terms. There's a lot Absolutely. of flexibility when you understand what's going on with the seller. But most people hear disrespectful offer and they think price. So that is where we focus. But realize terms are important too. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Yeah.